So we've come to Southport, just up the road from Liverpool, because I heard that one of my favourite people on the planet was residing here for Christmas. <laughs> Anyone that knows me knows I love Home and Away. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh, good on uh, you. So they know that being stood next to Irene from Home and Away, Lynn McGranger, Hi. is a big deal for me. That's very nice of you to say, love, it and is. it's great to be here. Um, I love doing Panta. I love doing Home and Away too, but it's great to be back in Southport. So you come to the UK pretty much every Christmas to do Panto, don't you? Away yes. from the heat of Australia to, to the cold of, of England. Absolutely. I'm not a fan of the heat. I think... Yesterday in Sydney it was 37 degrees. Um, I, I really don't like the heat. I'm very happy in this climate. So we're in Southport. It's a yes. beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Have you explored? Have you been out and about in Southport? Since I've been here, because we've only done six shows, I haven't had a lot of a, a lot of chance to get out and about. Have been to Liverpool to do a bit of shopping, um, but we have um, a day off in a couple of days, and I plan on dragging my partner who's over here with me. So you need to. Come to Liverpool. We need to take you on a day out in Liverpool because you'll love the Scousers. You will love us. So well, come I, and see I, us. I, I went shopping there the okay. other day. So that was good? Um, that was fabulous. That was fabulous. When I could understand people. Yes. See, I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to tone it down just ever so slightly. Uh, let's talk Panto because you're playing yes. a wicked queen in I Snow am. White. I am. How's that? Oh, it's amazing. It's the best part ever. You get booed. I mean, I was joking and, you know, we had 1,200 odd children in here today. And I was joking, saying that, you know, I could pretty much stand on stage and deliver the Communist Manifesto and no one would know the difference because they're all boo as soon as they see you, which is wonderful. And it's, it's you know, I love it that the children get so engaged and they get enraged like the younger ones. They just, you can see they just want to come up and humble you, you know, um, but it, it's so much more fun than goody. This theatre, for instance, Blood Brothers is coming. We've just seen mm -hmm. outside. There's some big productions, so check it out, Southport Theatre. The rest of this interview will be for me, okay? <laughs> so this, as a home and away okay. addict. <laughs> right. Tell me about life on the bay. Tell me about a normal day as, okay. a, as a soap character in, in home and away. Well, firstly, there's no such thing as a normal day because it depends on what your storyline is. It depends on what sets you are for filming in, whether you've got location. So there is no such thing as a normal day. One day you might be, I might be on call for 14 hours. The next day I might be on call for four hours. Secondly, um, we, n we never film uh, chronologically. So uh, we always film uh, location outdoors the week before we film indoors. Wow, so, so you could be on the beach and then the week after you could be in, in Irene's house. Absolutely, oh absolutely. Wow. So I always joke and say we bury someone before they die. So you always film the funeral. Well, there's been a lot of deaths in that bay. <laughs> there sure there really has. Has. Yeah. You really do have to know your stuff and know your journey, know your story journey for that, where you've come from, where God. you're going to. It's it, hard work. Yeah, oh, it's not just, it's you know, work. remembering lines and swanning around with yeah. cups of tea. It is sometimes, but mostly <laughs> it's not. Mostly it, it's full on. And that's why the kids who come to uh, and work on Home and Away, many of them, of course, go on to do, uh, go to LA, work yeah, in film. Like Isla Fisher or, or Pinky Pie. Chris Pine, Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. They've done so well, they're big, big movie stars. And they all started as foster kids, of, as I read. Yes, they did. I know you're going to ask me my favourite. Your people always <laughs> of course, ask. Of course, I'm going to ask you I loved working with Chris. Uh, not that I actually fostered him because I was having a, a relationship with his father, Barry Hyde, at the time, and so he was living with us. Chris is a dream. What you see is what you get. He is a gorgeous man with a wonderful voice, a wonderful work ethic, a lovely family man and a lovely actor. Hollywood hasn't changed him. No. In fact, I'll tell you a story. He came back to the Bay to visit some people about a year ago and he sat in the background of the diner as an extra. Wow. Yeah, just sat there I'm going to watch back and see if I can spot him. Obviously, you've been here a very long time. Second longest serving cast member after, after Alf Stewart, yes, after Ray Yes, and Lee, longest... Yeah. Female, female in that's, Australia. That's, wow! Yeah, that's amazing. longest running female. So, can you pick out some of your some of your highlights over the over the twenty odd years you've? Oh been? gosh, I suppose my cancer storyline was a big one. Uh, the Irene um, had breast cancer, and the reason that was um, well, it was dealt with very well, and it wasn't you know like a lot of soap stories. You know, you're pregnant, and three weeks later you have the baby, mm. or you know you, you've got a brain tumor, and then three weeks later you're better. Um, it went on and. 
we wanted didn't want to glamorize it we wanted to make it look like what it was about mm. um it it happened to coincide with um, a very dear friend of mine who um, is uh, was at the time battling breast cancer, um, has it has since come back in a secondary form, but she's doing okay. So we were paralleling her storyline. Right. Um, and what we tried to get across was that it's not just about the cancer, it's about the what happens when you have chemotherapy and radiotherapy and things like that. And we tried to make it truthful. So that was a very important storyline to me. Um, I've really enjoyed a couple of my more recent storylines where I was um, f- I fell off the wagon, went back on the grog again. Um, of course, the most recent one is because Irene found out um, through a story, a, a, a storyline with Olivia who had been abused, um, she had recollections of being abused and that all came back and she fell off the wagon. All of that stuff is, is very engaging for the, for the public and may not be easy viewing, but I think, you know, that the public really like it and I think that's why they warm to characters like you know, thankfully, myself and and Ray and and Leah and and Marilyn, because they they come with baggage. They're not perfect. Irene's certainly not perfect, and I love her because she's not perfect. And she's um, she tries to make up for what a terrible mother she was. She tries to do right by the children that she takes in and fosters, but she stuffs up. Well, listen, you've got to come and check her out. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs at Southport Theatre until New Year's Eve. Good Enjoy on you, Southport. Darling. Get back to Liverpool soon. Yes, and I we'll will. we'll see you on TV. All on the Home best. Away. Limit Granger. Thank yeah. you.